Hey everyone, I'm Bill, that's Bogna. We're with Kelly Motor TV. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Total Rock. And welcome back to the all new 2022 BMW S1000 Single R. And of course the 2021 Panigale V2. The lovely Bogna is in her brand new 4SR racing suit and she is absolutely loving it, killing it. And uh, well, she's also rocking the brand new forged black wheels with um, I think soon to be black carbon accents, right? I think that's what we're gonna do. Oh, well, spoiler alert. Um, but today we're going to be talking about a few more things about the S1000. Uh, and we're actually, uh, just a quick little ride. It's already almost 100 degrees today. It's Saturday and it's been like 110 degrees, 115 degrees. So we want to make a quick ride. I think it's like nine o'clock in the morning and it's already almost 100 degrees. So. We're actually heading home already, so we're going to take you for a little ride, but we're going to talk about a few things that I have found out about the new S1000R that we would like to talk about. So let's get on the road and uh, back to the dam, and let's talk about the new uh, S1000 single R. All right, well, I may have lied about 100 already. It's 88 already. Uh, it was about 92 coming through the hotter areas, but um, yeah, we're going to hopefully hopefully get up to Georgetown tomorrow morning for a quick ride. But uh, stay tuned. If you guys are new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Of course, smash the like button, ring the bell notification. It's going to give you guys notification of future content here on the brand new S1000 Single R. Uh, Bogna's obviously got the Pentagali V2. We have a V4 Street Fighter in the collection, an S1000 XR in the collection. And uh, Bogdan's been poking around for a new bike, so you guys will have to stay tuned. But today I wanted to talk about some of the things that I've found out about the new S1000 Single R and how I think that BMW kind of made a mistake with this bike. So let's get up to the light and let's get moving again and let's talk about why BMW made a mistake with the all new 2022 BMW S1000 Single R. All right, well, we're out here on the open road. Now it's 90. I told you, it's getting hot. It's getting hot. So I found out some stuff that I didn't quite know, and this explains certain things on the S1000 RR, the 2020 that I bought originally, and why I didn't like it and why Brent Tuning has fixed this. Now, this bike, uh, we still have the... Um, rev limiter on from the factory. We've got to get it in for its first 600 mile service. Uh, pretty soon here, we're at 336 miles. I'm hoping to be able to rack up the rest of the miles tomorrow so we can get this thing uh, out to Eurocycle Sonoma and get this rev limiter finally taken off this thing to open this thing up. Now, when I first bought my 2020 BMW S1000 single R, some of you guys have seen the video and a lot of people still comment on the video, well, why didn't you just tune the bike? I want to remind people that I had that bike. It was one of the very first bikes in California. It was one of the very first bikes to the US and uh, Brent Tune and their BMW S1000 RR tunes didn't exist at the time. And it was a, a, a time that I decided they already, within the first week, had a stop sale on that bike. And I decided that's why I wanted to get rid of that bike as quick as I could, because, well, it was in high demand and people wanted it. I actually sold it for what I bought it for, so I didn't lose any money. And, um, well, here we are now two years later on the all new 2022 BMW S1000R, which now shares the same motor as the BMW S1000 XR and kinda shares it with the RR. Now, this motor doesn't have shift cam technology. It has a, uh, a smaller, I guess you could call lesser cam than the uh, S1000 RR, which is the reason why this is still only producing 165 horsepower opposed to the near 200 horsepower, I think 191, 92 horsepower that the RR 
produces. Now, I think BMW made a major mistake with this bike. They had a very, very good opportunity to take this bike into the hyper naked class. Now, I'm not gonna call this bike a hyper naked because I don't feel like it is. I feel like the hyper naked category has moved up to about that 170 horsepower and beyond. So the Aprilia Tawano factory, I think falls in that hyper naked category. And that's the benchmark, that's where it starts. And then of course the Ducati Street Fighter just dominates that hyper naked. And I think Ducati did a very good job with getting the Street Fighter nearer to the Panigale V4S. It's obviously due to just a teeny bit, but this is a dramatic difference. This is a big difference between the double R and the single R. Now, BMW has this technology that I didn't know at the time, and I think a lot of people didn't know at the time, that this bike has these little flappers in the air box. And uh, I'm starting to learn about this. These flappers in the air box open up at 6,000 RPMs. It virtually starves this bike for air until 6,000 RPMs. And then, well, it opens up, turbo kicks on, and that's a lot of explanation for why I didn't like the BMW S1000RR is you had to ride that thing at such high revs to really have that power. And well, this is the same thing. It has the flappers in there and we're gonna have to remove those flappers in order to get that air into the bike. Now, if you guys are paying attention, I just passed a cop doing slightly over 55 miles an hour. So uh, we're gonna rinse this down just a little bit through this straight away. Hopefully he doesn't turn around. Snap a county sheriff. They tend to be a little bit, uh, a little bit more lenient, but we'll see if they pop around on us. Hopefully not. But um, so this bike, why they made a major mistake putting those flappers on this particular bike is we don't have as much red line on this bike. So those flappers open at 6,000 RPMs and well, we're flat on our face at 11,000 RPMs. So I think that the flappers should have opened at a little bit lower RPM or they shouldn't have put them on, is my opinion. But I think with the new Euro exhaust systems, uh, this one particularly Euro 5, I believe the S1000RR is also Euro 5. And uh, so I think the, the, the problem is, is noise and BMWs are historically known for having very, very noisy intakes, very noisy intakes. And so under 6,000 RPMs, like, well, above it right now, but um, we have those floppers shut and it's gonna quiet down the intake. And then of course, 6,000 RPMs, they open back up. So uh, I would have liked to have seen either no flappers on this bike or BMW turn those flappers to come on at an earlier time. But I don't know. I think that, I think it's just, the flap delete is going to have to happen. I think it's something that's, that is going to wake this bike up and put this bike closer to a hyper naked. Now, the next up will be uh, uh, once we get the tunes, or once we get the uh, rev limiter taken off, of course, we'll have Brent tune, tune this thing, which will definitely wake this bike up. And I, and I will give BMW this, is with this bike, they did, um, they did uh, fix a little bit of the, laziness that the old first and second generation S1000 single R had. 
I believe we are. I believe this is the third generation because I think it might only be the second generation. Well, correct me down below. But um, it was a very kind of lazy, easy, nice bike to ride. It wasn't really much. But this thing, although I've got the rev limiter on, second, third gear, it wants to wheelie. 6,000 RPMs, it wants to come up. Throttle response, I feel like, is, is much better on this bike. I think the handling of this bike is a lot better than the first generation. Um, I, I just think all around, I think that they did a good job, but I think that they could have done a better job, if that makes sense. Now, we are hoping to take this bike in particular into the hyper naked category. I am hoping that we can get this thing tuned up to be above the 170 horsepower mark. I think it's, I think it's reachable. I think we're gonna be able to get it into the 172, 175 mark which is about what the Aprilia Tuano kind of ran in. But you know, the difference between this bike and the Aprilia Tuano is this is just such a smoother bike. That Tuano was just such an animal. It was just such a sport bike to ride bike where this bike, they really toned it down. But not so much that it's not fun. But one of the things that I do like about this bike over my Street Fighter is this has a lot more sporty feel to the ride. Your seating position, everything is more, more aggressive. It's more like the Tawano. The foot pegs feel more like you're on an S1000RR. The bars, not quite as much as the S1000RR, but they're not lazy. They're not kind of up and back. They're much flatter, much more sporty. So I think BMW did do a good job with the riding position and the rideability of this bike, I really, really like. But the motor, ah, BMW, I think, I think you could have cranked it up just a little bit for us, just a little bit. Especially because you're getting to the price point where you're kind of in between the Aprilia Tuano and the Street Fighter. The Street Fighter, obviously, fully loaded V4S, $23,000, where the end package is 21 and some change, I believe. Uh, this is the sport model. We're at uh, 18000 and some change, which takes us down into the Aprilia Tuano factory. Um, and then, of course, you know, they've got the lower model than this, which really puts you into uh, kind of a, a, a basic Tuano. So... I think that I think that the bike has good qualities. I think that it has good abilities. And I think that this bike is going to have some very good uh, potential to climb up into that hyper naked. And I honestly think that this bike, once we get it tuned, it's gonna be a nicer bike to ride than the Aprilia because it's not gonna be as crazy and wild, but I think you're gonna have the power. Um, the suspension so far, I really actually have no complaints about the suspension. I don't, I don't mind the suspension. Um, and you know, this thing has some features that both the Aprilia and the Ducati doesn't have. So we'll talk about that in a future video. Really, I just wanted to talk about the engine in this thing and talk about the possibilities and what we're going to try to do with this bike and try to try to take this bike into that hyper naked because I think that our hyper naked definition is, has been lost, especially since Ducati is really just taken off with that. I think we now have a sport naked uh, category, which is going to be like the MT10 and this thing. And then we have the hyper naked, which is going to be more like the Tuano and the, uh, and the uh, Street Fighter. So I think we've got to get this thing into the hyper naked, which I think we're going to do. So uh, thank you guys for sticking around and the all new 2022 BMW S1000 Single R.
Panigale. How's it riding out there? She loves it. Loves it. Wheels, uh, the, so the wheels uh, a little bit higher, peakier, so we're getting a little bit more turn. Love it. Love it. All right, guys. Well, thanks for sticking around, and uh, we're here at the dam, and we're going to head home and cool off, but thanks for uh, riding with me on the S1000 Single R, and we'll see you guys next video. Bye, guys.